brothers and sisters, all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa. Today we are here to talk about the great harlot in Revelation. So we are here, episode 5E. I wanted to thank you guys for all your love and support. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share. As well as download these videos and remember AI and um, the digital devil, I call it, is here. Censor, censoring everything. So you guys are not alone. We're feeling it too. So remember, guys, share these videos far and wide with those who are in need. This is Bible Study 101 with End Times Prophecies. Rasen is here to unpack the Bible. Getting straight into it, Rasen, take it away. Thank you, Dan. Bless you, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord, Jesus. What a wonderful name. I'm excited once again to journey with you through the, this exciting topic of Bible prophecies. And... Um, all the way from Johannesburg. Do you know that Johannesburg is named after Johannes? And Johannes comes from Johannan. And Johannan is the name of John, the Apostle John. So, very interesting. This city is named after the Apostle John, who wrote the book of Revelation. So, you see now, we are on the same timeline as well with, Je with Jerusalem. So, Jerusalem... John of Revelation, very interesting, very interesting. So I was just thinking about it. I thought, okay, let me say something wonderful about our city here. <laughs> that could be scriptural as well. Um, very exciting topic today. The Great Harlot of Revelation, Part 5E. Another name, the Great Prostitute of Revelation. And I'll go straight into Scripture, Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 to 6. And uh, <clears throat> John is seeing this vision. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great hall that sits upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And I'll go a little bit further, I'll skip. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. Interesting. I'll continue further. Having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness, of her fornication and upon her forehead was a name written mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus and when I saw her I wondered with great admiration The reason for the great admiration or wonder that John did see that is that in his lifetime he didn't see a church, a so-called church or a Sunday of believers that actually turned not only against their Lord in falsehood, but also they um, turned on their own people, the Christians, and start doing actually martyrdom, actually killing some of them. So the great harlot of Revelation is the false church that will come out of a closet after the rapture of Jesus, the true bride. To understand more about our origins, we need to go to the prophecy of Isaiah. And I read Isaiah 47 verse 1 to 5. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. And it goes on and it, it reads, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit thou silent and get 
thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the lady of kingdoms. While this prophecy was fulfilled in the destruction of the Babylonian Empire, the reference of being a daughter of the Chaldeans suggests that the prophecy has a second meaning. The Chaldeans were the Babylonians. So their fate was sealed when the Babylonian Empire was destroyed. But the daughter of the Chaldeans, the meaning is for another entity. And that is the religious spirit of idolatry that came from Babylon. And Isaiah addressed that spirit. We can draw a better parallel between the prophecy in Isaiah and John in Revelation. In comparing those two verses. Uh, those two paragraphs in the different books. In Isaiah 47 verse 8 and 9 I'll read. Um... I'll just read the, in the middle, the main parts. Um, I am and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment. In one day, the loss of children and widowhood. Without finishing the whole scripture, I'll go to Revelation chapter 18. Verse 10 and 11. Standing afar off the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Okay. Now, John writing this as Babylon in the prophetic book, and knowing that Babylon doesn't exist, as an empire for centuries, obviously is a reference to the mystery Babylon. Now the mystery Babylon is the false church of Revelation. The same religious spirit that operated in Babylon is operating in the false church that will come out of the closet during the tribulation period. Have you noticed the similarities? In the same day, judgment came. In both scripture. The one says one hour, the other one says in the same day. What is the false church or who is the false church of Revelation? Why do God call her a harlot? In the Old Testament, when Israel started to worship false gods, God accused the Israelites of prostituting themselves by departing from the true faith. The book of Hosea or Hoshea is a good example about this narrative. Harlotry by Israel. By God calling her a harlot, it means that he refers to her as a false church or a false assembly. That's where the church or the synagogue that means assembly. But what attracted the leaders of the world to this false religion? We read Revelation chapter 18 verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. What did the Babylonian Empire have that attracted the nations of the world towards it? The answer is wealth, splendor, power and idolatry. It had everything the world cherishes, which is power, pleasure, fame and fortune. These are the four driving forces in the world. After the destruction of the Babylonian Empire, the religious spirit of Babylon continued to thrive in the nations that used to be under the Babylonian Empire, which included Israel. 
and we read Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 18 the children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire and the women need their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger when you make sweet bread and you buy bunnies for Easter would you like to know that the practice originates in worship of Queen Esther which is another name for Nimrod's mother Semiramides who was worshipped in Israel as the Queen of Heaven where do you think the name Easter comes from? It comes from Esther. You see? How about the Asherah poles that were in Israel all over? That God had to destroy through many of his prophets or kings. Later on, this practice moved to the Greek and Roman Empire. The same deity, or the Queen of Heaven, or reference to Semiramites or Esther, the same deity was worshipped by the Greeks as Diana or Artemis. And in the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 27, we read, So that not only this, our craft, is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificent should be destroyed whom all Asia and the world worship. As I mentioned in the previous sessions, Emperor Constantine Christianized the pagan worship of Diana by renaming her Mary, which marked the beginning of the Catholic Church order. Let's remind ourselves which of the seven churches of Revelation describes the best the Catholic Church? In Revelation chapter 2, verse 20 to 23, we read, Notwithstanding, I have few things against thee, referring to the church in Theatira, because thou suffer that woman, Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts. Brothers and sisters, is Jesus speaking here? He's saying, I will kill her children. Some of you are so driven to the good gospel of only peace and love that you forget that Jesus is God as well and is holy. He came as a lamb in his first coming, but in his second coming he comes as a king and a judge with a sword in his mouth and his garment is covered with the blood of his enemies. So don't ever take for granted God's love and holiness. Never! You show love for your God, he is love, but he is a holy God who doesn't overlook sin. It is a balance. Be careful that you don't go to the other side and you forget completely about God's holiness. Jesus described the pagan worship of Diana as the spirit of Jezebel. Jesus gave time of the Catholic Church to repent for its idolatry. Yet it did not happen. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm not speaking here about Catholic Church believers or let's say Catholics. What I'm talking here about is the religious spirit of Babylon that infiltrated the Catholic Church order, the leadership, the Vatican, and what actually they stand for. 
It's not preference for an individual Catholic believer that is godly and loves the Lord. Bless you if you're one of those. I've got nothing to say against what you believe. But I do have a lot to say about the institution of the Catholic Church that actually promotes idolatry. Now the Lord will strike her children with death. And did you pay attention? The scripture says the great tribulation. I will them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, it says the scripture. So during the great tribulation, Jesus will judge them. Um, I agree, Jesus is love and promotes love, but for his bride, the church, not for the harlot. The harlot will meet the judgment of God. Here is how a judgment will come. Revelation chapter 17, verse 16 to 18, I read, And the ten horns which thou sow upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. And it goes on to scriptures to say, a bit more about that judgment. The ten kings who will rule with the Antichrist for a short period of time will destroy the false church with fire. This can be interpreted different. How is she destroyed by fire? My personal opinion, it will be possibly either nucleus fire or an asteroid that will heal the center of the main worship of the false church. Where that will be, how it will be, it's an interesting discussion, but it's not for this topic now. The Catholic Church leader is the Pope. You all know that. And as I mentioned before in part 5a, a pontiff will be the false prophet. What are the Vatican plans for the future? I'll list them one by one. Number one, to unite all religions under its authority in worship of Temple Mount. Next, to mislead the whole world through false miracles performed by its leader, the false prophet. Next, it will claim to be the only true Christian, which by the name Catholic suggests universal church, by uniting the Anglican, Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, Protestant, Lutheran, Evangelical, and other apostate churches who have lost their lands. It will unite the three monotheistic religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Did you know that already the practice of Islam is fast spreading in North America, Canada, United States, and in Europe, where in mosques and churches, both faith, interfaith services are being held. Half an hour maybe preaching by the Christians and half an hour by the Muslims in the same assembly. Together, Christians and Muslims mix. How interesting. Next, it will kill anyone who does not subscribe to its religious order. How this will be justified? You need to find out more under the Noahide laws. Search the internet for the Noahide laws. They're being established as laws for the Gentile world. There will be one laws for the Israelites in Israel, but for the rest of the world, Noahide laws. Very interesting. Whoever does not follow them will be exterminated. Lastly, the false prophet will promote the authority of the Antichrist. Okay, we looked at it in chapter, in part 5a. Do you remember who presented the Agenda 2013 at the UN General Assembly in September 2015? 
Do you remember? There were two. It was the first assembly where a Pope ever came. And he spoke. You know which Pope it was. And you know, the other one who spoke the same agenda was the President of the United States at the time. So we see the fruits of Agenda 2030 even now. Interfaith services, appeal for digital identification, um, mandatory vaccinations, etc., etc. Truly, we live in amazing prophetic times. Um, this is about it for this session. I have so much more to say about the Great Harlot, but I'd like to keep it short. You can find a lot more info about it. You're welcome to uh, send me an email or comment. I will gladly reply. Our next session will be part 5F, the Synagogue of Satan, a dynamite session. You want to know who is in charge of this world from the enemy camp? And how they go about doing that, how they've done it for centuries, that is a session you should not miss. The synagogue of Satan. Please, Revelation chapter 2 and 3, in the two churches, that, like I mentioned, the church of Smyrna and the church of Philadelphia, they mentioned there. Bless you, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord, over to them. I just wanted to add, guys. I'm, I would say somewhat a very loving person in my best days, but I'm going to say, if I look at everything you say and I take in, I see that these churches are all about love, grace, and mercy. It's a nice thing, but you've got to understand that everything spoken about you is a war. It's a war brewing. It's a war since the beginning of time, and this war, it, we, we were getting ready for it. So guys, the age of grace is going to be over soon. Uh, we're actually shooting this now during Easter period um, 2020. Our episodes get um, scheduled. Yeah, um, and one thing I want to say, guys, please excuse. Sometimes there's noises in the background. Um, we are shooting this from the comfort of Rosson's home. So every now and again, you hear the dog bark, the neighbor's home. We've had fun doing this, but just that's why you guys hear some things in the background. But you know what? We will see you guys on the next episode, guys. Keep well. God bless. God bless.